Okay, today we'll talk about the uh, uses of bronze, copper, iron by Sumerians, and then uh, we'll also talk about the uh, uses of uh, these uh, metals by the Hittites. Now, I don't know if you know that the uh, use of metals actually uh, started uh, uh, in Anatolia mostly, not only, but mostly it was in Anatolia and partly in this region and also in the uh, Central uh, Europe. Uh, so you can look at the darkness. Darkness tells you that uh, the dark areas uh, uh, started much earlier than the other uh, regions of the world to use metals. Actually, the, it's, I don't know if it is clear, but th there is a borderline here. Is it? C can you see the borderline here? This is darker here. Uh, in the computer, it's very clear, but it, it's, it's somewhere here. Yeah, and just little south of. Uh, Turkey, not not all the way to, to Egypt. Well, anyway, so we we, we uh, have to understand that one of the earliest use of metals uh, in this area. We look at the entire Europe; they they had no idea about metals. The British people they didn't know anything about metals. The Northern people they had no idea that metals existed. They they had some, but they didn't hear anything about have not seen any metal. It's funny. <coughs> yeah, maybe I should tell you this little story, actually. I may forget it. Now, uh, you know the Roman Empire, right? The Romans, uh, of course, had contacts with, with, with uh, Anatolia and most of the other places. So uh, the civilization actually started mainly around Mediterranean Sea. Not much in the north, but uh, around Mediterranean Sea. So, uh, south of Spain or Portu Portuguese or it Italy, Anatolia and, and, and Egypt uh, because of the climate. I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, because of the climate, it's, it's not because these people are stupid so that they didn't develop in, in, in science and technology uh, uh, as, as early as uh, Mediterranean people. Uh, the, the ice age, started to end from the equator. So Mediterranean people were lucky that they reached to uh, sunshine and warm weather much earlier than the Nord Nordic people. Uh, but we were also lucky that in our mountains, in our land, in Anatolia, and partly in North, uh, northern uh, Mesopotamia and, and Iran, uh, and also the mountains over here, we, they had many metals. So the use of iron, for instance, started in Anatolia by Hittites. And uh, when Roman Empire conquered England, you know that England uh, were very unlucky people. Vi Vikings conquered them, uh, Romans conquered them, they were always at the uh, attack of various other nations. And uh, when Romans came to uh, England and during the war, they saw that the soldiers were fighting with the swords. And then all of a sudden, all of them disappeared in the front. New people came. And then after maybe half an hour, the other ones came to the front. They didn't understand what was going on, actually. They were using uh, copper uh, swords. So it, they were bending or, or even iron. They didn't have steel or bronze. It, it, it, they were just breaking, so they were going back and then fixing their swords and coming back to the front. Uh, also, in some movies, you may have seen, uh, maybe about Roman Empire or, or England, whatever, uh, uh, that when, when they are fighting with a sword, struggling with a sword, sometimes the sword breaks. Have you ever seen a movie like that? The sword breaks. It, it's because it's bronze. So bronze broke. It, it was hard. It's hard, but it's brittle. Copper is soft. So they had copper tools. It's soft. But when, when they invented bronze, it, it's hard, but it's brittle. But when they used iron, it, it was also flexible. But when they uh, discovered that you could make it convert it into steel, then you had much stronger and much durable uh, weapons. Well, anyway, so the metals, uh, the technology of metals, uh, we see that it started uh, Central Europe 
around Mediterranean Sea and, and in, in, in Anatolia. Now, copper was easy to find because you could see chunks of metallic copper on the ground sometimes. So when you have a metal, of course, you play with it, you make tools, things like that. And uh, we see that in, in um, Sumerian tablets, they mention a lot about copper and bronze and silver and gold, all the metals. Now, Hittites also used those metals at about the same time. But we don't have any written document about Hittites because of two things. Because the Sumerian civilization was discovered much before the discovery of Hittite civilization. That's one thing. So they excavated long before Hittite, the existence of Hittites uh, was not known for many, many years, thousands of years. They didn't know that there were people called Hittites. And there was a civilization in Anatolia. It was not known by the other civilizations. But in, in, in Torah, Tevrat, and Bible, they mention people of Hatti, people of Hatti. But they didn't know where they lived and who they were. Later on, some people said, if these people are mentioned in, in, in Bible and Torah, maybe we should try to find them. So the archaeologists, usually from England, came to this area, Middle Eastern area, Mesopotamia and Anatolia, they started digging. Uh, and then they started to discover certain things about Hittites. But the other thing that uh, we are lucky to read the documents or clay tablets of Sumerians is because they baked their clay tablets. So it turned into ceramic. So they existed, but unfortunately Hittites did not bake. They just made the clay tablets and then dried it under the sun and then they stored them. So many of them were just so brittle and they broke out. So we don't know much about Hittite technology. But the main reason is not only that. It's because, the, as I said, the excavation of, of ruins of Hittites, Hittite civilization started much, much later than Sumerians. The first one was Egyptians, because they saw the pyramids, of course, they dig around immediately. They dig the, the grave in the pyramid. You find all the metals, everything in the pyramid. It's a grave. Sumerians, they were lucky to find those ceramic clay tablets. And they started early, but Hittites, they started late. But also when they excavated clay tablets, they were brittle because they were just dried mud. The other thing is that only the palaces of the kings were excavated until now. We have not seen any Hittite house, any Hittite shop. So we don't know what the artist or the craftsman uh, during Hittite empire produced. Maybe we can, we, we can find, in maybe 50 years later, from maybe 100 liters, I don't know, years later, we, we probably will find clay tablets, uh, dried mud clay tablets, which will mention how they uh, tanned leather, how they purified gold, how they purified uh, uh, silver, or how they produce alloys. But I'm sure that we will find it one day. And now I'm, I, I'm sure that they are under the ground. But we, we know almost everything about Sumerians, because they excavated almost everywhere. So we have almost all the clay tablets in, in the museums. So these reasons, because of these reasons, we don't know much about the technology in Hittites. We, we find necklaces, things that we, I'll show you, but we, don't ha we have no idea anything about the description of the methods or technologies that they used. Now, but for Sumerians, we are lucky. They mention everything in clay tablets. Now, let's, let's look at it. It says, uh, 10 minas of copper and 2 minas of tin. I mean, any ordinary person can understand that they were making bronze, tin and copper together. If it is mentioned, that means that man is the producer of bronze, right? Another one says 900 shekels of copper and 70 shekels of tin. It's another, another store, another place, same thing. Another tablet from King Nabonidus. It says 24 and a half minas of copper and 14 shekels of tin at the disposal of copper cement. So the copper cement will melt them and then produce 
produce bronze, but we don't have anything like this for Hittites because we don't have the tablets. Usually the tablets excavated from the palaces just talks about the king, the wars, one letter from king to the other, and then also the treasure of the, uh, of the, uh, the, the, the king and related to religion. But no technology is mentioned in the palace. Bizim sarayda teknoloji bahsedilmez yani evraklarda. Dışarıda, fabrikalarda. Okay. The, the tablet says one mina of four shekels of refined copper. It's urudu laha in, in Sumerian language and ten and two, two over three shekels of tin, neku, and one and a half shekels of shekels and 21 grains, uh, bronze, that's urud. So we, we, we see many, many clay tablets mentioning bronze, tin, etc. Even to the details, it's 21 grain, so accurate, you see, even the number of grains they mention. So they know, uh, as I mentioned before, they know how to make models and objects from beeswax, as you asked. So they made many bronze statues and, and small uh, equipment, small app apparatuses. Uh, as we mentioned, they make the, uh, you know, the, the, the, the, the model of the object from the beeswax, and then they cover it with clay, and then dry the clay, bake the clay. Uh, there's a small hole when you bake the clay, beeswax just uh, melts. And then you have a vacant mold where you can pour in uh, whatever metal you want. And in this case, uh, during this time, they were pouring mixture of tin and, and, and, and copper and producing bronze statues or, or, or apparatuses or some uh, jewelry. Of course, we don't know how they discovered uh, to make bronze from uh, copper and tin. But what we know is that uh, they had a chance uh, to produce or to, to use some kind of bronze, which, is, which we call natural bronze. So when you mix copper with arsenic, and there are a few other elements, non-metals, you can produce kind of product which is very similar to normal bronze that we use. It's called arsenic bronze, and or, or we also call natural bronze. So when they discovered it, they discovered that it is harder and stronger than ordinary copper metal. So they used and they made some tools with the natural uh, bronze or arsenic bronze. But when you excavated and found a natural bronze, the percentage of arsenic differs. So for instance, if you are producing a sword or a spear for people, I, I, I make a sword, give it to you, you are happy, but I make another one, he is happy, but for him, I, I, I don't know the quality, I don't know the percentage of arsenic, so I, I pick up another bronze, I make a sword to him, and then he says, he's almost killed me, he said, I was going to die because your, your sword bended or broken. Because you couldn't control the quality of your tools, because you, don't, you didn't know anything about the quality of the bronze, whether it's in the right por proportion or not. Therefore, they knew that there is something stronger than bronze, more durable, but they didn't know how to make it. But later on, they discovered that if tin is mixed with uh, copper, we don't know when and how, but we can only estimate when, because we, when we find the uh, artifacts from the layers, we can estimate that they, they started to use it. We know that they definitely after they discovered the copper, because copper is, is one of the earliest metal used by human beings. But we can have an idea, but we don't know the exact date and how they did it. Because we find tools which are actually copper, tin, bronze, different than arsenic bronze. Now, when they started to produce bronze and make tools out of bronze, that, that, that bronze age is 3200 BC, between 3200 BC and 11, 1100 BC. And then it suddenly ended. Bronze, bronze age was the 
uh, was the era of or time of economic expansion. All the countries in Middle East and in Anatolia or Mesopotamia, they became rich because of bronze, because they made tools, very strong uh, weapons, so they, they won the wars. So they grabbed their uh, old, old, old treasure. And they also occupied lands. So, but all of a sudden, at 1100, it ended. Can you, have, can you suggest something? Why it ended? Ne olmuş olabilir? 3200'den 1100'e kadar gitti. Sonra birdenbire dediler ki ya boş geç bronzu. <gülüyor> Why? Basit ya, simple. İlk geleni söylerseniz doğru çıkabilir. Aklınıza ilk gelen. Bir yeni bir metal bulmuş olur. Ne olabilir? Ya, yeah, iron. See, when you discover iron and then you, you quickly you learn that you can turn it into a stronger iron. There are ways of doing it. And then iron became much more popular than bronze. So bronze was not necessary for them for weapons, of course, for other things they did. But the, the ma major use of bronze uh, replaced, bronze was replaced by, by, by iron. Now, bronze were, was popular because it was easier to cast bronze compared to copper. Can you tell me why? How come? It's easier and it requires less temperature to, to, to, to, to, to melt bronze and, and then uh, shape it in a mold compared to copper. Çok basit. İlk geleni söylerseniz doğru çıkar. Yeah, what is the role of tin? Because tin lowers the melting point of copper. Melting, freezing point depression or melting point depression, right? Okay, so they were happy with bronze for many things because it, it, it, it required much less energy and, and it was durable, stronger, but then it was replaced with iron, as we said before. Now, we see that the, uh, uh, the object, as I said, we, we, we don't know exactly uh, when they started, but the oldest objects that we find, it goes back to 3,000 or 3,100, uh, but mostly, most, uh, mostly we find most of the objects around 3,000. It started in 3,100, but 3,000 was the, the peak of it. Now, when we excavate the graves or the palaces, we find that nine out of 12 of the objects were bronze. So it was, so bronze was the most popular and mostly used uh, material for producing uh, household goods or, or, or weapons. Now we can see an ax around from 2900, around 2350 BC. Uh, it, it just looks like the ones that it's, that's more than 4,000 years, or almost 5,000 years ago. Exactly the same, didn't change, you see. The tool, the shape of the tools does not change. Exactly. Now, they, of course, they use bronze for making some uh, goddesses or gods, statues of gods and goddesses. This is uh, the figurine of a, a Lama, Sumerian goddess, around 1800 BC. They used bronze and some ceramic parts. Now usually when we talk about bronze, you have copper and about 12% is the ideal, roughly, is 12 to 2.5 uh, tin. Uh, but today we do not use only tin. We also use other metals like aluminum, manganese, nickel or uh, zinc. Do you know the difference between pirinç, we have bronze, pirinç bronze? Color uh, looks a bit different. Pirinç bronze. Hangi renge çalıyor? Parlak. Parlak sarı. Bronze daha koyu. Do you know the difference between brass? Pirinç is brass. The other is bronze. Brass and bronze. 
what metal we add to copper to obtain brass. We know that we add, or we used to add only tin, now we add the other ones, but do you have an idea? What is the composition of brass? What we add instead of tin? Hiç duymadınız mı? Hani kapı kolları filan evlerde bilmiyorum hala var mı? Musluk, musluklar eskiden bahçe muslukları filan hep sarı, sarı, sarı derler ya. Hmm? One of the metals in the slide is zinc. Zinc. When you use zinc, you obtain brass. When you use tin, you obtain uh, bronze. But you, now in the modern time, depending on the, the, the place that you will use the the, the, the uh, bronze, you change the the uh, the the. Uh, metal that you add to. So you make a mixture depending on your desire, depending on the desire of the industry. Or sometimes even the look, look, looks of it changes, the color changes. Now, there is, there is a problem because when the uh, archaeologists excavated the area, they, f they, they were able to find copper mines. And they knew that they produced copper from there because they had all the fire, all the remains that they, they excavated the, the mine and then they produced copper. But they couldn't find any uh, mine of, of tin. And they said, Mesopotamia or, or, or Anatolia? There, were, there was no mine where you could say that, okay, Sumerians and Hittites, Anatolians, obtain tin from here. Of course, without tin, you cannot make uh, bronze. And for many years, they said, well, maybe they imported from Afghanistan. But from importing from Afghanistan is not easy. It's such a long distance. It would be very expensive. Like, it would be like gold. In those days, you don't have planes, you don't have trains, you don't have buses, no trucks, only by walking or, or, or on, a, on a horse or whatever. So transportation took months, sometimes a year, from a distant place. But uh, later on, we found out that it was not uh, from Afghanistan. And this problem was solved by a Turkish lady scientist. And she excavated a mine, a village mine, about around Tarsus, anybody from Tarsus? Var mı Tarsus? Arkadaşımız yok. Okay, from Tarsus. And her name is Aslıhan Yener. In 1994, not too, not many long uh, ago, uh, she was lucky to find a mine where tin ore was there, and she also discovered that they produced tin from that mine. So the history of bronze in the world changed as far as Anatolia is concerned and also Mesopotamia. And we didn't know for many years that Anatolia exported tin to Mesopotamia. We didn't know that. So Anatolia was not only producer but exporter of tin. So she discovered that around uh, uh, 2850 BC, uh, they were 70 BC, they were producing uh, tin and of course uh, bronze in, in Anatolia. Now, let's get back to the beginning. As, as I said, uh, bronze era or bronze uh, uh, period had to come to an end around 1100 BC, because iron uh, became much more popular and they knew how to, uh, co uh, how to produce uh, durable uh, materials from, from uh, iron. And all the weapons were converted from bronze or copper to, to iron later on. Now, of course, we have to talk about the uh, sources of copper. I mean, it, it was out on the streets. 
You had to find a mine, dig it. The lucky people, they found chunks of metal, metallic copper. That's okay, but that's, that wasn't enough for the technology, for the civilization. So you had, to, you had to find the mine and you had to discover how to convert the mine to metal. But in the beginning, they were lucky because most of the mines were copper oxide. And it's very easy to convert copper oxide to metallic copper. Can you suggest how we do it? You have copper oxide. You have to get rid of the oxygen. It's very easy. Heat it up a bit. Heat it up a bit. Roast it a bit. What? To remove. There's one thing which is very, which easily removes oxygen from anything when you heat, it, heat them together. I think I mentioned it before. Is it coal? Hmm? coal? What kind of coal? Charcoal. Charcoal. Odun kömürü, charcoal. Right? You take the wood, you roast it in the absence of oxygen. It's charred. We call it charred. So it becomes almost pure carbon. Not purist, but very almost pure carbon. Then you have your source of, it's hungry to absorb oxygen. You heat them together, it produces carbon dioxide, and then you have the metal just flowing. Now, copper metal uh, uh, and, and the mine was found in Chetalhoyuk because from excavation we see that uh, they used uh, copper. It is a uh, Neolithic uh, settlement. Uh, it was discovered by, uh, by James Mellart. Have you heard the name of James Mellart before? It was in 1958 he discovered Chataluik, one of the most important uh, civilization in the past. It, it dates back to uh, almost 9,000 years, more than 9,500 9, years ago. There was a big civilization there, and he, he discovered them. He stood more than James Mellart. He, he, was a, uh, he was a British scientist. He had permission to excavate, and he discovered Chataluik, and he, he worked here for many, many years. But once he discovered the treasure of a queen, and then people said that he stole because he exhibited the, those jewelry, the necklaces, rings, etc., or bracelets in, in England. And then the Turkish government said, this man is a thief. We don't want him back here. We'll take him to court. So he couldn't enter Turkey for many, many years. Uh, but we know that he took them. But most of the archaeologists in Turkey, they, they, they stole everything. So maybe they just let us about 10%, 20%, depending on the person. So. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in, in the museum in Berlin, in museums in, in England, in, in museums in, in the United States. But in some cases, we say that maybe we were lucky that they stole them because if, if they stayed in our country, the, the thieves would steal them and then again sell them abroad. And, and some of the statues would be broken because there was the habit of breaking statues and some wall paintings, things like that, you know. The, the, the ignorant people didn't, doesn't know anything about the value of that. So at least they were protected, that, but our governments always tried to take them back because there is a law, international law, which helps the countries to take back their original uh, artifacts, archaeological artifacts, so we, we slowly take some of them back. But still, uh, m many of them are, are, are in, in, in, in European museums and, and also in, in American museums, but mostly Germany and England uh, museums. But anyway, as, as I said before, we know Hittites had technology in all fields, but we have no written document, no written proof yet. Now, when we talk about copper, as, as I mentioned, it, it goes back to many, many years, almost 10,000 years, because it, it was there on the ground. If you were lucky, you could find big ingolds, big ingolds of, or chunks of, of metallic copper, na native copper. 
they, later on they discovered how to how to produce copper metal from the uh, from the, uh, the the mine or usually copper oxide so we discovered that in in Chayone, near Ergani Diyarbakır uh, they discovered uh, some copper uh, products like pins owls buzz and işte şeyin ayakkabıcıların kullandığına buzz diyoruz ya delik delik ineğe geçirmek için uh, in Chayone uh, hill they found various copper products dating back to uh, thousands of years now I don't know if you heard this the word dövme bakır. İşte duydunuz mu öyle dövme bakır, dövme bakırdan. Hiç duymadınız mı? Hammered copper. Now you when you see the copper men copper shops they, they keep beating, right? Do you know why they do it? Not not only to shape it up, but there is another advantage. Hiç değil mi? Dövme dışında ses duyulmaz. Çıt çıt çıt çıt çıt. Also, the, uh, the, the, the, the, the bells that they use in or orchestra, the drum, uh, battery, they have the, the, the brass bells, goes bing, and then if you watch the document, they keep hammering it, bang, bang, bang, bang, bang, bang, and then they produce the best bells in the whole world. The top musicians in the world, batterists, they always buy from Turkey. So they go bang, bang, bang, bang, bang, bang, bang. But you, you, could, you can see that they are so uh, talented people. They hammer it so carefully that if this is the, the, the bell, brass bell, they hammer it with circles like that. They never hit one spot second time. If they do, the, the boss will get very angry. So, so it's unbelievable. They, they cover the entire surface with these dots. That is the secret of high quality sound. Because when you hammer copper or brass, it gets harder, it gets stronger. You cannot bend the copper. It becomes almost brittle by hammering. So you change the distribution of the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, crystal structure of copper. But if you need it, then they, they they relax. They are under stress. So they, they, they discover that, uh, the Sumerians, they discover that by hammering copper, you can make more durable, or, or stronger actually, I shouldn't say maybe more durable, uh, it, it, it very hard metal. Copper is very soft. But they reach to almost to, to, to, to the, the hardness of iron by hammering. So around 7,000, they already had discovered that by hammering, you could make a harder a copper. But as I said, it, since it became brittle, they had to find a way and, uh, and annealing. Tavlama diyor, camda da olur. Hatırlıyor musunuz? Camcı tavlama, ta, fırında tavlar. Öyle bir lafı duyduk mu, duymadık mı? Duymadık mı? Annealing means tavlamak in Turkish. Now, if you go to the glass blower, if he makes a simple thing like a tea or any, any complex uh, apparatus by blowing, glass blower, he must always put it into the oven. Go up to, let's say, 600, 700 degrees centigrade and then cool it down slowly. That's, that's tavlama or annealing. So when you heat a certain part of the glass, you have a stress building up there. So it cracks from there. So you have to warm it up so the crystal structure relaxes and then gets back to the normal uh, structure. So you remove the stress. If you have stresses at various places of glass, it, it shatters easily. So same for the metal. So if you hammer it, you, you produce lots of stressed points. If, if you put it into warm oven, then you remove the stress. So they discovered that too. Now, of course, when you have copper, you do not only produce materials by shaping, 
<coughs> you have to you also have to melt it and cast it if you want to let's say make a statue out of copper you have to melt it so that's what we call casting and uh, we see that the first uh, objects uh, produced by copper casting were found in Jan Hassan Mond Jan Hassan Huyu in Sarın uh, Anatu Konya var mı aramızda Konyalı Karamanlı herkes buralı uh, just uh, around Karaman uh, they discovered that uh, that in that Huyuk in that mold uh, that uh, they they uh, were able to produce casted copper so it they date back to 5000 BC or 7000 years ago in neolithic times and th that era era 5000 BC we call calcolithic calcolithic copper and stone copper stone age calcolithic lithic means stone lithic when you hear the word lithic means stone calco it means copper and mix we used copper and stone at the same time that means we couldn't switch to iron age yet or bronze age calcolithic now these are uh, some of the uh, objects uh, produced by uh, uh, hittites as i said of course these are just imaginary drawings but we the objects are real or, or original excavated artifacts products of uh, Sumerian so some artists drew some pictures trying to represent how uh, they produced these uh, objects now uh, you may have seen uh, in some places uh, copper uh, metal in, in this form have you ever seen it's, it's, it's, it's thick like this It, it, it's usually as big as this and they call it the shape of the skin of sheep animal you see when you flay the animal sheep in Kurban Bayramı you can see something of course the head is here but it, it looks like that and this is a regular form uh, Sumerians used it Hittite people used it even in modern times we see something similar looks like this exactly like this today modern many metals are casted in this form today and it, it used to be like this. <coughs> the reason for those days was easier to carry on your shoulder. But today it's not to carry on the shoulder, but to move them constantly on a trail in factories. So you have trails, raylar var. Bunlar üzerine koyuyorsun, makine gibi zzz, zzz, bu şekilde gidiyorlar. Now you have impure, impure copper, you take it to an uh, electrolysis solution in the factory, you make them, an, uh, you have an anode and cathode, so you make them anode because they are not very pure, when you cast them, they are let's say 95, 97, 98, 99 percent depending, but you need 99.999 pure copper for electrical cables, electronics, etc. So you have to purify it by electrolysis. Smelting is not enough. So you make them anode, and then you have a cathode, small cathode. So copper ions go into the solution, then get reached the cathode, and then they are reduced to pure copper. Okay? So this structure is very similar to the Sumerians and Hittites, or even Egyptians, I think. So this is not very surprising to see this kind of copper uh, carried out on the shoulders of some some slaves or people in in all uh, the drawings. As I said, that's the structure of, uh, about this size. Uh, 
depend, depends very slightly, but the structure never changed for, for centuries. So these are another uh, tools produced by, by, uh, from metals by, by Sumerians or Hittites. Hittites, sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was talking about Hittites. Now, I'm sure that you have seen this Hittite sun disk. This represents the sun, sun god. And uh, I think in Sahiyat they have a statue of that. Uh, it's, it's used for ceremonies, and this one is uh, uh, dated to 3300 down to 11, uh, so 1200 BC. It's the symbol of Ankara University. I don't know if you ever go to Ankara University. It, it, it, it is the symbol of, of, of uh, Ankara University. Now this is another uh, bronze tablet from Chorum, Boasköy. Uh, 1235 BC, it's, it's in Ankara, Hittite, we call Hittite Museum, or official name is, is uh, uh, Anatolian Civilization, Museum of Anatolian Civilization. <coughs> I said that they also discovered how to convert copper oxide into uh, copper metal by, by uh, rusting uh, or smelting. And these ores are well known as malahit and azurit. I'm sure that you Maden ders alıyor muyuz artık yoksa yok mu öyle bir şey? Maden bölümünden eskiden bize aldırıyorlardı. Malahit and azurit. Jeoloji de yok, maden dersi de yok. İkisi de yok. Nedense bize ikisini de aldırıyorlardı. Malahit and azurit, they are well known copper uh, minerals. So there is an important uh, relief by hammering. This is uh, Anzo. Uh, it is a mythological figure. Uh, dates back to 2500 BC. So you, you see that uh, in mythology, humans are like animals, animals are like, hum like humans. The, the head is lion, but the body is, is eagle. So it's a kind of God or devil, sometimes in mixture because it's in, a, in, in a mythology, I think it tricks the God, lies to God or something. So in mythology, the gods or devils, they are all strange things, you know. They rape women or they steal, they lie, they kill, just like crazy civilization people, you know, they, they, they do anything they want because they have the power. So that's mythology. That's why sometimes mythology and history gets confused, you see? Because one edge of mythology is, is, is, is partly in, in religion. Some part of religion is sometimes partly in, in mythology. People sometimes cannot distinguish the two. Because, I mean, it's very hard to imagine the gods are fighting there, you know, stealing. Be, be becoming a devil sometimes, sometimes acting like a god. So this Anzo was kind of a uh, mythological hero, but tricked the god or something. Well, anyway, so, but the idea was to show you, not uh, to uh, tell Anzo, but it is a nice, beautiful um, shaped copper just by hammering, not casting. This is not cast at hammering. A relief, it's a relief. Now, uh, we, this is the copper bust of, of, of uh, Urnamu. He lived around uh, 21, uh, 2112 up to 2095 BC, and it's an arsenic copper. It's natural, natural bronze. Do you remember his name? We talked about him, Urnamu. There was? Uh, yeah, law, yeah, code of Urnamu, law, yeah. One of the oldest, when, we, when I talked about Hammurabi, his, his law was much earlier than uh, Urnamu, she, or Hammurabi. So Hammurabi says, this is the, by law, came from God, <coughs> things like that. <coughs> what can you do? People believe him. They had to. Now, you remember this, uh, the queen? Poabi, uh, she had uh, 
Where is jewelry? I have shown, I think, previously. This is her sled. Kazakh. Uh, but the reason we, I put it here is that because uh, it has uh, copper studs, uh, perchin. Copper, they used copper studs. And by a luxury shop, it's kind of nice. Like, attachments, sutler, pusler, mujaherler. How much are they? Do you remember? It's so attached to it. Ehli keyfmiş kadın. You can uh, excavate or dig uh, copper mines in various, from various types of mine. This is an open mine, we call open pit. So as you go down, you, you start with a big circle and then you go down uh, by excavating at layers. You have to have layers because the trucks sh should travel there. So this is from Chile. Chile was well known for, for very large copper mines. Do you know why, what, which element is related to Argentina? Anybody knows Argentina? His name, the name of the country comes from an element, or element comes from Argentina. Argentina. Önemli bir metal, very important metal, Argentina. Valuable, when I say valuable, then you can estimate. Valuable, important metal. Very easy, very easy. At? Gold? Huh? No. Silver? Silver. Don't you remember the uh, symbol of silver? How clear could it be? Argentina, AG, see? <laughs> when they say in French, we used to, ha we used to have, we used, I used to use uh, uh, silver nitrate a lot in, my, in, in electrochemistry laboratory because I, I, I used to make uh, silver electrodes. And it says nitrate d'argent. D'argent means in French, Silver, nitrate, d'argent, silver nitrate. But anyway. Now, when we look at copper, silver, and gold, they are usually found in the same mine. So when you find uh, these metals, you can be sure that you can find the others. Like, because they all have filled the electrons and one electron in the s orbital. So, it gives them the metallic property because when you have one S electron, uh, it, it gives them the, the metallic property and they are ductile, all of them. Copper, silver, and, and gold, they are very ductile, easy to bend, easy to shape, and uh, they are highly conductive, you see, very conductive. Now, if you are rich, you, you don't use copper, or if you go to high technology for wires, you don't use copper wires, you use silver. But even you go further to have almost no resistance, you use gold, right? In, in chips, they use gold, not silver or copper. So all the uh, small wires that you see in a, in a silicon chip, all very thin uh, gold. But there is a property of gold and silver. When I said thin wires, how thin do you think that we can pull the gold? and silver. They are ductile, but also you can make very thin, very, very thin wires, much, much thinner than your hair. Your hair is about 100 angstrom, let's say, or 80, 90, 100 angstrom. Much, much, much, much smaller than that. Any idea how thin can we get? Huh? Just use another sentence instead of monolayer, because monolayer is like this. Monoatomic. Yeah, monoatomic, yeah, both. You can have monoatomic. Silver and, and gold, both. Okay, now when we look at the uh, copper production, of course, all the cables, many uh, kitchen goods, in, in the past we always used copper before aluminum was uh, invented. 
so one of the mostly used uh, metal is, is copper technology and household everywhere. Uh, so you can see the production is about 19 uh, million tons a year. Probably it's higher. This is an old statistics in 2020, maybe much higher. Now, it was easy in the beginning for Hittites and, and Mesopotamians to produce copper from the copper mines because all they had to do is take some charcoal and then put it into the oven together with the um, copper oxides easily they obtained uh, metallic copper but later on uh, that malahite etc almost finished all of a sudden they came to a mine under the bottom that's copper sulfide copper sulfide is not easy you cannot use charcoal to uh, to, to to produce metallic copper so of course they had a problem for a while, but later on they discovered a way uh, to uh, produce metallic copper from copper sulfide. Now, the, do you know the name of Cyprus, where it comes from, Cyprus? <coughs> metal, one metal, which metal? Cyprus? Hittites used to go there. Hittites conquered Cyprus several times because of something. Because it was famous for, very simple, Cyprus, Cyprus. Try to pronounce it in, in, in Latin, Cyprus. You don't say Cyprus, but you say something else. Cuprus. Cuprus. The Cyprus people, they say Cuprus, Cuprus. It, it comes from Cuprus. Cuprus means copper, right? It, it, it was the richest. Uh, copper mine. The, the, the mines in, in, in Cyprus were the richest uh, copper mines. So all countries went there to buy cheap copper. They, ex they, they became very rich by exporting uh, to, to all countries around Cyprus, north and south and west, everywhere, southeast, everywhere. But their copper was copper sulfide. So in order to produce metal easily, you had to carry out a simple reaction and then you could do it the way you do with the copper oxide uh, mines or minerals. If you can convert copper sulfide mineral to copper oxide, then it's, it's easy. Can you think of a way to convert copper Sulfide to copper oxide so that you can just use charcoal and easily produce the metal. Just suggest a way to, to, to convert it to copper oxide. Very easy. You have to replace sulfide with oxide. You just roast it in the open air. So it, it, sulfide is replaced automatically by oxygen. When you, when you roast it up in the open air and remove the carbon dioxide, then you have copper oxide, then it's very easy. You just take it to the other factory and then use charcoal and then produce copper metal. Sorry, you, you, you produce, of course, you have to be careful that you produce sulfur dioxide. See, when you oxidize it, sulfur dioxide is very harmful. Why? Why sulfur dioxide is so dangerous? Because it forms what? Sulfur dioxide forms something. An acid. Which acid? Sulfuric acid, sulfurous acid, you see? So that's why for many years in Ankara we used to burn coal. And that coal contained lots of sulfur, and there the was unbelievable air pollution. When you walked out, you couldn't, you, you couldn't breathe. You had to use your handkerchief to, to breathe properly because of the uh, sulfur dioxide. And when it rains, then it produces sulfurous acid, and then it's very harmful for not only for people, but for, for all the nature. So thanks God that we are not using uh, 
coal anymore. But still, we are very happy to use natural gas, but now we know that we are now producing lots of carbon dioxide. We have to stop producing carbon dioxide, so we'll see in future. We hope that we can find a clean energy. Of course, sun energy is the best, but it, it requires some investment, unfortunately. In, in, in, uh, in Turkey, it, it proceeds very slowly, and we have to do something uh, to produce solar energy as soon as possible, because Ankara is one of the luckiest cities in Turkey, because we have sunshine uh, almost more than many other cities in Turkey. So we have to do it. Okay, now in, in, in Mesopotamia, when they built a palace or, or temple, big building, they used to put uh, a piece of gold or metal to the bottom of the, uh, the, the, the, the, the, the building. Before they built the building, they dig it, and then they used to put some gold or silver or bronze, and sometimes statue. Here we have the statue of the king. It's like a, it's like a nail. You see? Temel Chivisi. Base nail. Temel Chivisi. So this was a habit. If you are rich, you used to make nail out of gold. If you are not that rich, you used to make it out of silver. If you are not so rich, you could make it brass or, or copper. But you had to have a nail. So the building was protected by gods for some reason. Now this is the statue of the king on a nail, on top of the nail. So the king will protect the building forever. Now we see uh, a Sumerian dagger, which is made out of copper, as you can easily see. Uh, copper turned into uh, green copper sulfate and deteriorated. Uh, it goes back to 2500 BC. <coughs> now, the earliest uh, daggers uh, were either copper, bronze, or some of them were iron. Uh, do you know anything about the, uh, the difference between the uh, meteorite iron and the normal iron? Meteorite iron, normal iron. Have you heard meteorite iron? Meteor, demire, meteor, chili, meteor. Does the name indicate anything? Meteor iron? I'll talk about iron, but I just wanted to remind you <coughs> slightly. Why do we say meteor? <coughs> because, yes? Yeah, for, comes from space. space, meteor. Meteors fall on to Earth every day. We don't see them because many of them, when they, uh, when they enter the, the atmosphere, because of the heat, they just disintegrate. They just crack and broke and then broke into pieces. But some of them are big, they fall, and we, can f we find them. And some of them are rocks, but many of them, if you take it, if it's heavy, like you see sometimes on television, you see, it says, I have a meteor, I want to sell it for one million dollars or something like that. They think that anything comes from the sky is worth a million dollars or something like that. But usually they are, they are uh, uh, iron minerals. But there's a difference between the meteor iron and the iron that we, uh, we produce, or sometimes if you are lucky, you find some chunks of iron. It's not, it's not easy. The iron that we use is different than the meteor iron because it has another important element which makes it more durable and valuable. What do you think that it may contain? None of the iron you find on the ground does not contain or contains that, that, that element. <coughs> Hittites were the first civilization in the world who produced material from the meteor iron. And they became very famous. The kings always were begging the Hittite king, please send me a dagger made out of your special... They, of course, the king didn't tell him that. He, he picks them on the streets from in the forest. 
he, he looks for um, uh, metal or iron. Uh, and he wrote a letter to the king, he says, it's not easy to find that special iron. So whenever I, I produce enough, I will make you a dagger. So it may t take a year or something because it's not easy. What element could it contain? <coughs> Any idea? Nickel. So whenever you find an artifact, iron, archaeological material, if you see nickel, you say, no, this is not natural iron produced by human beings. It is the metaur. This is produced from metaur iron. Anytime, it's definite. When you say a dagger, any, any sword, whatever, artifact, because they didn't know anything about mixing iron with nickel. They had no idea. They, it, it only can come from the, from the sky. So anything coming down from the sky was very valuable in the old days, right? Very valuable. And uh, they almost considered it something coming from the God, a gift from the God. They, that's how they looked at it, because it comes from the heaven. That's how valuable they were. Hajar al-Aswat, do you know him? Hajar al-Aswat, Kabel. Hajar al-Aswat. Hajar al-Aswat is, is, is a kind of uh, meteor. It's on the corner of Kabe. It's, it's still there, about this big. So it was so valuable. Anything coming from sky was always, in all religions, all civilizations, was very valuable. Because it was very rare. I mean, you couldn't find it just when you were walking on the street. It's very, very rare. But Hittites were the first people who produced daggers and snow, uh, swords and spearheads from that uh, metal iron. And they used them and they also sent them as gift because it was so valuable. Only you could send it as a gift. You, you didn't sell it. You just sent it as, as a gift for, to, to, to have peace between two countries. Did you hear such a thing? Nikel. Gökten gelende nikel var, ayırmak. So any, any time you see in, in any museum, you can be sure that if it is nickel, it is there. Okay, well, anyway. So, uh, Sumerians made many uh, weapons and, and tools for hunting, etc. We, we see that they have, uh, dating back to 2500 BC, uh, two spears, muzrak, and uh, on the left and right, in the center, harpoons, zıpkın, zıpkın, so in order to hunt the, the, the animals or fish, they used uh, spears and also they used harpoons. That dates back about f almost 4,500 years ago. Now, when we look at the, uh, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, uh, most of the metals in the world were, were, were concentrated Anatolia and partly Mesopotamia and some in south. So this is a map of various uh, metals, arsenic, copper, tin, iron, gold, silver, lead. Uh, I cannot even read this. So you can see that especially Taurus Mountains were very rich, still are very rich. That's how they found the, the lady, uh, lady professor found the, uh, tin in La Taurus Mountains. Uh, this is Cyprus, copper, it's red, Cyprus. So, it, so it, it, it goes to Zagros Mountain, Iran, in, in, on the border of Iran, Zagros Mountains, in Mesopotamia, various places, but Mesopotamia was not so rich uh, in, in any metal. You see, you can see anything. Arabian desert, nothing. Canaan, Syria, or Lebanon, they had nothing, no metals. So they depended on, on Anatolia, mostly. And some Iran, and maybe late also some from Afghanistan. So this is the root of uh, copper uh, trade. Copper trans were being sold from Cyprus to the rest of the world, from Taurus Mountains to the rest of the world, and also to, to even to, to, to, to Mesopotamia, Lagash. They didn't have it. So in, in Egypt, in, uh, even in further below, around Red Sea, but the concentration was here. They were all exporters.
Okay, let's take a break before we start on iron.